dual axis podcast. And conveniently enough, I have twins. So maybe you two are the dual axis today. My name is Andy Kriebel. I am the head global head coach of the Data School. Thanks for joining me today. And the purpose of this podcast is to bring interesting people to you that are influential in the world of data. And today I have the Flairlish brothers, Kevin and Ken. Which which one of you was born first? I was. Okay. So like, we'll go it was with a Kevin C section. So it was whichever one you picked first, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, I have twins as well. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, no, but they no, were no. they were they were not in a C section. They were a natural birth. I actually got to deliver them as well, which was really cool. Wow. That's it was a really awesome. neat experience. Something I'll never forget. But um, wow. anyway, uh, Kevin and Ken, you guys are both Tableau visionaries, and uh, you share so much about what you've been learning along the way. And we'll get to that in a bit. But for, we're going to start by talking about personal development, how we come up with personal development plans, what are the things we look for, and how do we take those factors and put those into um, the work we do day to day. So we're actually going to barely talk about Tableau at all. And that's actually one of the things I'm trying to achieve with this podcast is to not talk about Tableau, but it's really difficult given my bubble <laughs> is Tableau. So uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So great. Okay. So let, let's hop to it. Um, and I've got a list of questions here. I'll start with Kevin since you're older, and then we'll go back and forth with the questions. Um, <laughs> what does personal development mean to you? I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about I, it, this is going to be so hard to stay away from Tableau because it's it's my perspective and that's why I know you and that's why yeah. we're on this podcast. Um, but I mean, obviously it's incredibly important. I spent 15 years, uh, as I always say, grinding in and out in Excel mm -hmm. and didn't, and I was really good at that. But, uh, you know, the next step of my life was always a little daunting because, you know, who's going to pay me a bunch of money to do Excel all day long. <laughs> and, and, um, and, you know, so I was able to walk down that personal development path with, mm -hmm. with Tableau and, um, in, in with Ken's help as well. And I think we'll certainly talk about that, but, um, and it's really changed my life. It's changed Ken and, and our relationship it, it, people might not know, but Ken and I live eight hours away. He moved away when he was 21 to chase a girl, which he's still with. And he has a couple of kids with, but uh, she hasn't run away yet. She hasn't run away. Um, <laughs> So, so, I mean, in, in our relationship was, was, wasn't super tight for a long time and, and we, it is now, you know? Um, so personal development for me was, was, you know, helping to, you know, uh, give me that comfort of the next step, you know, when, when I was okay. going to look for a new, new job and develop, you know, develop those skills, but also it's been a great, um, it's a great thing for personal relationships, not just with Ken, but with you know this entire commu data community that's yeah. been always so willing to 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 help. And, and and I always say I could go to any city, pretty much any city in the world, and have dinner with somebody that I know. Yeah, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's, it's pretty a close. Great community. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And Ken, what does if you could define personal development, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting you ask the question. You use the term personal development, not professional development. Right? Yeah, you know, I think professional development is this sort of subset of this larger category of personal development. Personal development, sure, it's about you know s building skills and, and you know uh, things that you can help you in a professional career. But I think personal development is broader than that, right? It's 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 learning to be a better person, a humble person, right? You know, a um, an accepting and caring person, right? So I think you know it's 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 all about sort of just improving who you are both as a you know a person who has to work as well as you know a person who has to live and interact with others in in society right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's more than just your career it's kind of your life and your priorities and uh, your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, all those sorts of things, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about those because there's some some kind of basic things you need in order to kind of fulfill your potential. So let's talk about uh, I think four or five of those. So we're gonna start with mental, uh, and Ken, we'll go back to you now. Um, how do you exercise your brain and stay mentally fit? Uh, yeah, I mean reading, right? I mean I think you know. 
I, I, I love to read, right? And I just read all kinds of stuff all, all over the place. And, and maybe it's not so much. My, my wife is, was, was, is a reading teacher. And she, she tells me that audiobooks and stuff doesn't count as reading. Um, <laughs> but uh, I listen to a lot of audio. I love audiobooks. I, I count it as reading. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of different topics that um, are, you know, maybe, maybe things that aren't things I, you know, aren't my expertise or, mm. or sometimes things that are right. But, um, you know, so just constantly trying to sort of pick up all kinds of new information and different perspectives and, you know, not always sort of jump, not always just sort of uh, sticking to my own opinion, but trying to hear what other people are saying and, and understand their, their points of view. Um, I, you know, I think that's a big part of it. Um, you know, I, other parts are just, you know, doing things that challenge you to, to make you think, you know, problem solving, you know, and, you know, to, again, we're trying not to talk too much about Tableau, but, it, but for us, I mean, for, that's been a huge part of it, right? Yeah, you know, they're just puzzles for you, right? The problems you're facing are just puzzles. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. And, and, you know, when, when you're, and again, you know, I'll use Tableau as an example, but, but anything can be like this, right? You, you know, you're, you're for you're you're faced with some sort of problem that you have to solve, and the more complex those problems, the more you have to sort of stretch, uh, you know, your your abilities and your your skills and your knowledge. Yeah. Um, and and I I you know, think you know by doing that we really sort of keep keep that fresh and keep you know keep our brains working uh, a little extra yeah. in doing that and and yeah so I think that's a big part of it. Okay. And you have to also make sure you don't run away from those problems just because they're tough. That's actually the ones when you're going to, you know, you guys know from this, from the, the content you guys create, you know, it just kind of so far over my head, but you, you make it in such a digestible way that, you know, that that's a, that's a really important skill as well, that communication part of it. But if you run away from the problems, you're never going to solve them. And that kind of, you miss an opportunity to grow mentally there. How yeah, about the rest? Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think, you know, that's advice that I would have for, for folks out there. I mean, we do in, you know, the stuff that we're putting out there, the people that are out there teaching these things, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're trying to make it easier for you to do these things, but you, but we also want you to do the work, right? You're not going to yeah. learn it by just regurgitating things that have been right. Right. Out, right. you know, right. dig, dig into it and, and really try to understand what's going on. Yeah. And yeah. you'll, then you'll you'll be in better shape next time you have those sort of more complex problems. Yeah. I used to tell people when they would ask for the visual vocabulary that I created, they would say, can I have a copy of that? And I said, sure, but I want you to try to build them all yourself first because the resources are there. You're not going to learn anything by just downloading you know, my, my charts. All right. So mm -hmm. I wanted, I want people to use that as a learning experience, which I know you guys do uh, a lot of the same thing. Now, one of the, so Kevin, you know, you're obviously doing a lot of the problem solving as well, but a, kind of a, a secondary aspect to the problem solving is also rest because your brain just can't go all day. So how do you incorporate rest into your mental development? <laughs> it's funny and, because- and, and I, don't, I don't mean sleep. I just mean kind of, you know, like how do you switch off from that problem solving? What were you going to say, Ken? Well, I-, I you you don't rest that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just, I, I was, you know, I know you said not just sleep, Andy, but Ken Ken needs like nine hours of sleep at night, and I need like five, right? So and so we're, we're just certainly not identical in that in that regard. But um, yeah, I, I think that was something I did poorly at first when I first discovered Tableau. Um, I, I was doing it all the time. I think I created five or six Tableau public visualizations in the first three weeks. Um, and it was just, you know, I would just do it all day long and to the point where my wife said, Hey, listen, I'm really excited that you found this, that you're passionate about, Yeah, but you have family. Right? I mean, it, was, <laughs> it was, you know, and this is three weeks in like, okay, I really need to do a better job of, of, of managing my time. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so I learned that over time, I was probably a little too aggressive allegate, even probably for the first six months, I probably did, did a little too much, always said yes. Uh, I have over the last couple of years found the importance of saying no to things. Yeah. You know, there are, there are times where 
like you just you can't commit to everything right and, and that's important mm. for for your your own um health you know i i don't you you talk about rest i mean rest for me is 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 not necessarily you know sitting in or sleeping or whatever you know i love to you know play games with my family i do things at church mm. um i there there are things that i think are restful that kind of get me out of the I don't know, work or professional mindset that, right. that, uh, rest, rest my brain sitting down and playing a, a board game or, you know, my son just bought the VR, uh, game. I mean, that's like just this mind numbing thing. It's a ton of fun. Crazy. Cool. By the way, if you never tried it, I get um, serious so. motion sickness from that. <laughs> oh, dude, my wife does too. She won't even, she won't even try it, <laughs> but I mean, it's those kinds of things that I think, uh, give me the rest from, you know, trying to solve these problems all day long at work and outside when we're, you know, doing blog posts and right. things like that, um, that, you know, that, that give me a break from it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's move on then to social connections and relationships. Obviously all three of us are very involved in the Tableau community. Mm -hmm. Um, we, that's how we met, you know, at least for me, that's how I've met kind of my best friends, you know, um, you know, when, when, like you said, when I, when I go to a new city, I try to meet up with people that I know, and I know those people through this community, right? So that's how we've been building some of our, um, some of our social connections. Um, so Kevin, personal development isn't a solitary activity activity though. You can't just do it yourself. You've got to have this kind of support network around you. So who helps you and how do they help with your personal development? So personal development or professional development or all of it? Um, let, let's say personal development. Yeah. I mean, talk about personal development. I mean, it's, it's, you know, probably more so my, my family, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you know, my brother, my, my wife, my parents, right. You know, those are the people that I think encourage me on more of a personal level. When we, we talk um, about, there's the sort of in between, you know, when we talk about, you know, you know, you know, all these people uh, in the community, you could go to some random city and have dinner with somebody. Um, you know, I think those people, you know, the, and, and I'll call it the Tableau community or data community in general. I mean, those people are really, really impactful in a professional um, setting. You know, I think I've learned so much from all these other people, been inspired by these mm -hmm. other people and learned, you know, how to do X, Y, Z from Andy Kriebel's YouTube page or, you know, from Roddy Zakovich or whatever. Um, but those, those things, and you really touched on it, those, those people, those things have, have morphed into a personal relationships as well. Right. I mean, you said it, some of your best friends are because, you know, you used Tableau and you're connected to people on Twitter and LinkedIn and, and such. So I think those, those connections have helped me grow, not just, you know, in the data space, but also as a, as a human being, you know what I mean? Mm. And I find that, wow, I didn't realize how much I love to help other, other people. I mean, Andy, I don't, you know, you don't get paid to do your YouTube site. You're not getting paid to do the podcast. I mean, maybe that's incorporated in, in your job. You know, our blog posts, we don't make a dime from, right. We do, I did 18 presentations this year. I didn't get paid anything for those. <laughs> and, and it's because of this desire to help people. And I think yeah. those relationships and under and seeing how it impacts others made me want to help, you know, and, the, and those people that helped me, you know, the Jeff Schaefer's, the Andy Kriebel's, the Steve Wexler's, the people that helped me, you know, kind of get started. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes you want to do the same thing. So I think it's this, the professional and, and personal growth kind of go hand in hand when we're talking about this, this wonderful community that's done so much for me and, and makes me want to do much so much for other people. Mm -hmm. Ken, let me go back to you with a question about rest. Do you ever sometimes just do absolutely nothing and just go outside, maybe go for a hike, listen to music, uh, just yeah. kind of completely shut your brain off? Yeah, I saw, I see the question. Kevin right. doesn't. I mean, we've established that. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see the question here on the, the yeah, that's where uh, around that. And yes, I mean, absolutely. Um, I have, I have to, right? I mean, I, I think um, sometimes, People don't realize, you know, I, I sit in a chair all day long and, and work at work, right? You know, and but and so one would think that's not that's not uh, mentally or that's not taxing, you know, but it really is, you know. I get home, I'm exhausted, 
Um, so yeah, just sitting around, um, just chatting with family or just listening to music or um, going for a walk or, you know, exercising or, um, you know, watching a movie, those kinds of things. I need that. I need to just sort of turn it all off and and just do something that doesn't require any sort of mental activity. Um, And and, and let me just kind of touch on what Ken said is, is, you know, Ken and I, people don't think it, but Ken and I are both introverted. Um, we, we have this ability to be social and it's easier when you know a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but we're both introverted. So and from my perspective, I need time by myself as well. Sometimes mm-hmm. I just want to be away, love my family. Sometimes I just need to be away from them. You know, talk, we're talking about the Tableau Conference. You're, it's this, this, this barrage of people. When I get back from Tableau Conference, my wife wants to hear all about it. And I just want to go to my room for two days uh, to be alone. <laughs> Um, and I think about the uh, the um, the movie Office Space, uh, where he says, "If you had a million dollars, what you do?" And that would be like what you should do as a career. And he says, "I would do absolutely nothing. I would sleep <laughs> till eleven, and I would just do nothing." And sometimes just doing nothing is just incredibly uh, powerful. And and I think Ken feels the same way. It's like sometimes you just need to do absolutely nothing and be with absolutely nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 On the physical side of things, so for me, for example, I like getting up really early, getting my workouts in, and then, uh, you know, I feel like I've accomplished three or four hours worth of things before anybody else has even gotten up yet. So I've got this chunk of my day where I can be super productive. How do you all do, you you know, manage sort of the the kind of physical side of your personal development? Uh, I'll admit I've done a horrible job of that lately. I mean, I used to do the same thing as you, Andy. I used to run... Um, I did a lot of half marathons and never wanted to do a full cause I didn't, yeah, I just didn't want to go through that training, but used to get up at, you know, five in the morning, get, you know, you know, hour and a half run, run in and, and feel, feel great. It's amazing. I find that I like to sleep on the weekends to sleep till 11 instead of getting up. Oh my. And <laughs> I can't sleep. I know. I, 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 my whole family did last weekend, oddly. Um, so, you know, I used to spend a lot of time in the gym. Um, and I, it, it's easy to fall out of that. So I'm in that sort of yeah. rut where I'm at probably the heaviest I've been in probably 10 years. And, yeah. um, but, but nothing replaces getting up at five o'clock in the morning and you've got two hours of running and hit the gym and you got three, like you said, three hours of, of physical activity before anybody even you know, takes their head off the pillow is an incredible feeling that I probably need to get back to. So I, I, I love that. to sleep too. So I, I cannot get. <laughs> I cannot make myself get up early to, to do that kind of thing. But, um, you know, for, for me, it's, you know, getting home from work and my brain is just mentally taxed at that point, mm. um, you know, where I, it, then I just spend, you know, and it's not a lot of time, but I spend half an hour just uh, doing weights or, you know, just a short sort of workout. And I think, you know, I think that's important for everyone to, to realize that, I mean, you don't have to go run for three hours. You don't have to go lift weights for an hour and a half. I mean, just finding some time to do some, a little bit of physical activity, whether it be short, short workouts or going for walks or those kinds of things, all those things are just really, really important, I think. And, you know, to Kevin's point, I, I, you know, I've, I, for years was a gym rat. Like I was spent, you know, I went to the gym every single day and sort of fell off on that. And, I'm trying to sort of get back to that. And, and, you know, I lost uh, 35 pounds earlier this year, I think. Um, and I've sort of gotten back into that rhythm and, and it's been just, it's been so much better for, um, you know, it's amazing how that impacts your, your brain as well. Right. Yeah. How it makes your, your brain more ready to take on uh, some of the, the taxing mental activity that you have to. So um, yeah, it, and, and it, for me, it's just been these short, you know, workouts a few, you know, three, four times a week. And it's made a big difference. 
Can you just I need share to get those endorphins going, right? You know, get that. Yeah. And I, I know for me, I have a lot of my best ideas when I'm out on a long run. Totally, and, yeah. You know, I take I take a note on my phone or leave myself a voice mm -hmm. message. Or if I'm with Eva, I'll ask her or I'll call her and say, Hey, can you send me a message that you know, right. or, you know, whatever it might be. That's when mm -hmm. I solve all my problems, but I've solved world peace agree. several times, but <laughs> Totally agree. I have an hour drive to work and I only go in a couple of days a week, but um, you're right. That, that hour is, is really critical. And yeah, I solve all kinds of problems in that, in that hour of time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so Kevin, how are you, how are you going to go about reestablishing a routine? <laughs> because that's, that's a really you know, great like question. Up back into a routine, you right? You probably yeah. had a routine before you fell out of it. You're back in a routine now, Ken, and it's even, it's now easier to keep the consistency once you're in that routine. But the really hard thing is getting back into that cycle. It's so true. How are you, how are you going to approach that? Ken, Ken was always about 30 pounds heavier than me at any given time. And now it was mostly muscle though. Is what yeah. He says yeah. there's mostly muscle. There's a lot of <laughs> gut too. Uh, <laughs> Not a lot of muscle. Well. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I, I, I might be heavier than him now. And uh, not muscle. I still have a lot more muscle. <laughs> um, it's tough. It, 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 this is a really, that's a tough question to ask when it is, you know, December 1st, when we're you know, <laughs> smack dab in the holidays and, you know, we're all going to have time off around Christmas and I'm going to want to, you know, sit with my brother and drink whiskey and eat cookies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, yeah. I'm going to be the first to admit it probably won't happen until January. And then I'll realize I'm as, as heavy as I've been in five years. And what happens is uh, uh, Danushki at work, Danushki de la Vera, people might know, we uh, we like to do weight bets and uh, we'll always do one in January and we'll do a weight bet. And I'm motivated. Um, we probably won't even bet anything. It'll just be, you know, uh, bragging rights. I'm motivated by competition. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm incredibly competitive at everything. Uh, physical or, or mental or, you know, tableau, whatever. Um, so that's usually how I end up getting in better shape. But, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm going to be, I'm going to be trade honest and say yeah. it's won't happen until January, but, um, but I'll get back in the gym. I'll start running again. Um, my, I'm old, my knees are starting to hurt. So maybe it's uh, <laughs> swimming instead of running, but um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I need to make it a conscious effort. And, and I have a wife that wants to stay in shape and is in good shape, but wants to stay in shape as well. So, yeah. We'll, we'll take that. We'll, we'll kind of be accountability partners for that. And I'll be you, thinner and trimmer than Ken. I was at my best. I was in my best shape ever at, at the age of 40. I actually had abs almost kind of popping through. And I never had that in my life. And it's it's depressing that six years later, I'm probably 30 pounds heavier than I was yeah. at that point in yeah. time. Yeah. So is your plan then to put on as much weight as possible before the end of the year so that you can win in January? <laughs> <laughs> I may have done that last year. <laughs> it's it yeah, might I mean, not be I, my plan, but I can guarantee I'm going to do it whether whether it's intentional. Yeah, yeah. it, it sounds like we're motivated the same way. You know, our brains kind of work the same way, like competition wise. I need to have some kind of goal, yes, you know, that right. I'm trying to achieve. So, for example, I was talking to Tom Brown, the the the. Um, the founder of uh, Information Lab today, and we have a Christmas party coming up on um, on Friday, and there's bowling, and and I was you know he's asking me if I'm any good. I said, well, I used to play in a bowling league, and he's like, of course you used to play in a bowling league because it was competitive. <laughs> you know, I wasn't right. very good, but it was all handicapped and everything, but it was really fun. You know, it was a competitive thing for me to do, and I always have to have something that I can push myself towards, and. Yep. You know, like you said, that could be tableau. It could be, um, you know, learning to do underwater basket weaving. It could be, you know, <laughs> photography. Like I wanted to learn how to do photography. So I set myself a project. Um, I did this probably 10, 12 years ago to take a picture every day for a year to get familiar with how to use a camera. I set up a website uh, and I can see my progression of my work. Same thing we do wow. with Tableau, right? If we look at our Tableau public profiles, mm -hmm. we see that progression in, in, in our work. So I would encourage people to have these small goals along the way. Um, you know, I started doing um, a tip every single day because I want to learn how mm -hmm. to do video editing better, you know, right. and it doesn't take long to edit a one minute video. So there, you know, there's lots of, so I'm giving myself excuses to start learning other things. Um, but mean, Kevin, anyway. Being twins, I mean, we've always been, he's more competitive than me but uh we've always had sort of this built-in competitor right that we can 
and and it's never done in a you know in a mean spirited way but it's i always want to be i would always i always like to be one up on him right you know say you, you go to our presentation this last year and kevin's talking about favorites on top of the public and all that stuff and, <laughs> In, but it's just a little bit of that competition that creates this sort of motivation to like. Man, he he knows he can poke you. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of nice to have this sort of built-in competitor that just is always sort of spurring us forward to to do better on things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, quick question for you, Ken: um, Is your treadmill behind you just for clothes to hang clothes on? <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> okay. So yes, it's the other. Yeah, it's it's good my, for my, that's, that's my wife uses it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go for a walk. I gotta I gotta get outside and see something. Um, but when it gets really cold in Pennsylvania winters, then the treadmill is yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't miss those Pennsylvania winters. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, did. I remember we came up there for Christmas one year, maybe it was Thanksgiving, and it was like 10 below, and I went for uh like a seven uh, mile run around that lake and it was absolutely miserable. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel good when you're done, you know? Yeah. I, I was glad to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, so Ken, um, part of personal development is being able to give and receive feedback. Let's talk about receiving feedback. How good are you at receiving feedback and kind of, you know, um, not taking it personally, I guess, you know, people, people give you, uh, if you're asking for feedback, let's say, for example, how do you then receive that feedback and sort of incorporate that into your personal development? Um, yeah, I mean, feedback is one of those things. It's just so hard, right? And so, especially if you're getting unsolicited feedback, right? People, people do have a tendency to sort of take that uh, personally sometimes. Um, you know, I, I you know, as I mentioned before, when we were talking about personal development, um, you know, I, I really want to hear people's perspectives and understand where they're coming from and understand their viewpoints on things. So I think feedback is very much that that kind of thing. You know, when you get feedback, it, you know, you're getting insight into some other person's perspective on, on something that you've created. And often when you're creating something, right, when you're building something or writing something, um, you you know, get sort of, sort of narrow focus on what you're doing, and you don't often think about all these other things. So I think that insight that you get from other people, um, it just goes so far to to make things better and improve. And um, you know, again, you know, Kevin and I are lucky because you know I, I we're constantly asking each other for feedback. Right? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Um, but you know, I think, but but we also share a lot of the same way of thinking. So getting that feedback from other people, you know, from people who maybe not mm -hmm. familiar with the subject matter or the tools that you're using or whatever, right, is really helpful to kind of make things more accessible and make things more, you know, sort of um, available to people who who, have, who think differently than you do. So, yeah. but it's hard. But it is hard. I mean, I remember. I remember that first month when I created all these visits, I, I created one about uh, the water crisis in, in Africa. And I created these little charts with like water bottles. And it, I was using Tableau for three weeks at this time. And I truncated the bar charts and Ken said, Hey, you really, you really shouldn't do that. And guess what I did? I didn't listen. <laughs> it got visit of the day anyways, but then Ben Jones from Tableau reached out and said, Hey man, you shouldn't truncate your bar charts. And I'm like, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm such an idiot. I had the guy that but you knows didn't know the any stuff right? tell me. But I, but I had him who told, he can told yeah. me specifically, like, don't do that. I ignored I, him and said, what does he know? Obviously he knows way more than I did at that point. And, and I got called out on it by, you know, the guy who was running Tableau Public. By the way, Ben was really polite about it, but, uh, <laughs> but I did fix it. Guy, um, yeah. And I, and I think over time you, you, I think at first it was like, I'm just going to, I was just almost arrogant. Like I, I've been using Tableau for three weeks. What, a, you know, I, I know everything there is to know about it. And uh, I think it's a, it's a really a learned thing to be able to take feedback. And sometimes it's still hard. Sometimes I, said, I, I just don't think that chart works. It's like, well, I think it does. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. hard sometimes, but how I, I just don't see how anybody grows without being able to, to accept uh, feedback. Yeah. I mean, it, makeover Monday is, 
basically have been around forever and it's the most popular community project and it's all based around you know feedback right like yeah. i create this and you as experts give feedback on on this and um i just think it's the most powerful way to grow is to learn and, and accept that other people have different perspectives than you and get and those people that can provide feedback they might not always be right but you need to be able to listen and apply that and iterate yeah. on your own work and, and to to improve mm -hmm. Yeah. What, um, what's a piece of, so Ken, what's maybe a specific piece of feedback you've gotten that's kind of helped you develop as a person? Hmm. Um, and that's a really tough question. It's a tough question. Well, maybe, he's, to try, maybe he's trying to trim down the list. <laughs> I mean, you can think of a lot of things that had a that maybe seems small, but had a really big impact on me. Okay. And um, it's, it, again, this is going to seem really small, but early in my career, um, when I was communicating through word, written, written through emails or documents, I was so wordy, right? I would just write every possible thing and it'd just be these, these huge paragraphs full of, of words. And I just had a, a, a supervisor once who said, just try to cut back on that a little bit, right? Just kind of be more succinct. And and again, it seems it seems simple and small, but it's something I think about every single time I'm writing something. Um, you know, certain things you can be working, yeah. with, you know, um, but particularly you know emails and short little things like that. You know, it it really it's something I think about constantly every time I sit down to write an email, for example, mm -hmm. um, and. And it's been, it was hard. Like it was hard to sort of change that behavior. Um, so again, just a, a simple thing, but something that's had this sort of lasting impact on, on me that I think about all the time. Um, and I think there are a lot of those, maybe there aren't a lot of those big things, but there are a lot of those little things that add up to, you know, mm -hmm. just improving, you know, as an employee, as a, as a person, right. In, in my lifetime, in my career. Yeah. How about you, Kevin? I would say it's really from my wife. So uh, Ken knows my wife is a hyper extrovert, um, you know, wants to be doing stuff with people all the time. And I, when, when we got married, I was the exact opposite. Um, the neighbors used to call me the Unabomber because they said I was just hiding in my you know, basement. Uh, That's pretty terrible. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. And she was, and she just kind of had an honest conversation with me and said, listen, you can't live your life alone. You know, you got to be, um, you got, you know, life is better with, in community, you know, life is better yeah. with, with people. And she said, you, you know, you gotta, you got, you gotta do something about it. You know what I mean? Cause we were so different at that point. It might be partly why we were attracted to each other. I don't know. Opposites attract, right. But, um, and, and it's like, wow, that's, I mean, she makes a lot of sense. Seems so dumb that I'm, I'm quite like I didn't realize this, and and I and I started to watch her. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be more like her. I want to be more like her. I want to be more outgoing. So uh, over time, I just forced myself to do those things and realize, wow, I really like this, you know. And people you know, tell people in the taboo community, uh, you know, hey, we're we're total introverts, and people go. No way, you guys are introverts. <laughs> There's no possible way, and it's true. We are, uh, and you know. We, get our energy from being alone and come back from the table comers. I want to be alone, but uh, I've, I've realized how beneficial this is to, to my personal life and, you know, and in the career as well, you know, you gotta be social at work. You know what I mean? You, you gotta help yourself get those opportunities. Um, you know, so um, yeah, it's really, uh, it was feedback. I probably didn't want to hear uh, and thank God I got it. Life, life, yeah, life. a lot different. Wives give such good feedback. I mean, to, to give yeah. an example of wife feedback for me, I mean, early on in our marriage, we'd get into a fight and yeah. I just didn't want to be part of that. Right. I just walk away. And I, and you know, I think that's kind of what our parents did, Kev. Um, and not the totally parents, totally. Parents, parents are great, but um, I, you know, they would often sort of go to their separate ways. And I think that was, you know, something that I started doing. And at one point she said, stop. We need to talk, right? There's a reason we're having an argument. Let's have the argument. Let's get through it. You walk away, we're just going to be mad at each other, and we're never going to resolve it, right? And it's just like, 
wow, that seems so obvious. And, and it wasn't obvious to me. And I probably was angry at hearing it at first. But again, it's one of those things that every time that argument starts, you know, I want to start walking away. I have to force myself, you know, finish the argument, move on and, you know, not just sit there and, and stew and be angry at each other. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's, let, let's do a couple of, of uh, rapid fire questions here. So Kevin, um, how has sharing and engaging with others helped? I mean, I, I think you said it, you say it all the time, right? Then you, when you, when you used to write blogs and do, you know, you don't really write blogs anymore. You do mostly video, right? Am, am yeah. I correct in that? Well, yeah. I put the videos but, up as a blog, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. You provide content and you've said that you do it for you, right? Yeah. It, you learn through that process. And I think what happens is, you know, writing a blog or doing a video, it's it's a time consuming thing, right? Let's say it's, it might take me three hours. So I got this technique I, I need to do. And so I need to write it out. And as I'm writing it out, I go, okay, what if I could do this better by doing this, or maybe I could use a table calc instead of a fixed LED here. And you start to go down these rabbit holes. And through that process, you learn so much about, you know, and, and, and maybe improve the technique or maybe just learn, you know, different things that you didn't, you didn't know before. So it's just this really uh, deep process of, of mm -hmm. learning while you're writing. Um, and, um, and, and you really, I think, I don't know if there's a quote, something about, you know, writing makes you become that ex expert in that particular topic. Um, and so, I mean, for me, that's, that's the biggest benefit. Um, you know, obviously we're doing this to help others as well. You know, we, uh, people have helped us. We want to help others. That's the reason we're doing it, but we get all these benefits from it. And I mean, I know I reference my own blog posts, all the time. I'm constantly going that's back. Why you I have, that's why I did it. Right. I have absolutely no idea how I did that a year ago. How am I going to do it? You know, I spent, you know, I've yeah. been digging into Ken's blog post here recently. So I think there's this great benefit of, of, of mm -hmm. doing it your own on your own for, for the sake of learning and safe sake for reference. And this additional benefit is other people, you know, get the benefit from yeah. it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I find I learn the most when I have to write it because right. you have to write it in a way that's easy enough for other people to understand. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, you, Kevin, you might've worked through a problem, you know, the calculations in your head, but then you have to say, okay, how am I going to mm -hmm. write that in a way that other people are going to understand it? Because otherwise it's useless for them. Right. So, right. Um, you know, that, that's a great way to learn as well. And how many okay, times so have you got to that point where you're like, why the heck did I do it that way? Yeah. Like, I could have skipped <laughs> six steps. And, and then rewrite the know, blog post. Yeah. And then you just have to rewrite the whole thing. And then feedback is often where that comes from as well. I mean, right. yeah. our blog presentation, I was doing this this whole big convoluted thing. And Kevin said, Why don't you just do this? I'm like, oh God, you know, that's so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sometimes um, you get lost. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and right. feedback that we get on the blog as well. People point that out, you know, in the comments, and it's just like, oh yeah, you're right. And we go back and update it to, to make it easier for people to understand. Yeah. So Ken, how is how is helping others? Um, how has that helped your career? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think helping others is a big part of why we're Tableau Visionaries, right? I mean, that's one of the big cat categories there, and um, you know, I, I I I'm working at a job that I that I've been working at before ever even, you know, getting into Tableau and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, people still sort of recognize that, Hey, that's a big thing. Right. And, and, and see that, you know, that we're, we're experts in this, in this space. Um, you know, so I think, you know, that just sort of being known has, has been helpful and, and knowing, you know, I think, I think I know that if, if I, you know, if I wanted to, go do something different that I've got all these sort of connections and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm known and it, it would be, it would be easier to do that than it would have been, you know, six years ago, the last time I was looking for a job. So yeah, um, maybe not in, you know, directly impacting my, my job right now, but I think it's had, you know, these, these sort of side effects and benefits and, and even people that, you know, don't work in the data space, you know, 
recognize that this, you know, being that being recognized as this visionary, even though they may not even know what Tableau is, that 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 is something that says something about my my skills and yeah. um, knowledge in this space. And so I think, you know, I I'm often, you know, people trust me that I know what I'm talking about, right? And yeah. that, that's always beneficial and and mm -hmm. right. for sure. Yeah. Well, you've developed skills you know, that, that are transferable to other jobs. It doesn't have to be Tableau related. You, you've learned how to learn, which is an incredibly important skill. You've learned how to communicate. Um, you've learned how to interact with others. You've learned all these kind of soft skills that you really, you can't, nobody can teach you how to do that, right? You just have to, you know, you, you've got that, um, that thing about you that makes you want to go do these things. And those are transferable skills to any job that you have. So, you know, if Tableau goes away tomorrow, you still have all these skills that you've learned along the way that are going to help you in any job that you have. Well, right? Learning how to learn that just that idea right there. Yeah. I mean, I work at a liberal arts college, right? So learning how to learn is like the most yeah. important thing. Um, and it's so critical. I mean, um, it, you know, I, you, there are people that can, you can go and learn a bunch of technical skills on how to do something, but if you don't know how to learn or you don't know how to sort of ask questions and, and, and problem solve, um, you're never going to be good at that one thing. Those technical skills are, are something you can, anyone can pick up, but learning yeah. how to yeah. learn or learning how to ask good questions, learning how to troubleshoot problems are, are things that are harder to learn, harder to teach. Um, and, but so critical in, in this space that we work in. Yeah. People struggle with that so much too. Like just the idea of, how do I, I got this problem and we'll use Tableau as an example. I have this thing that isn't doing what I expect it to do. How do I walk through this progression to solve the problem? And a lot of people have no idea how, how to really break, break that down. Break it into um, pieces so, I mean, a really important skill and not just analytics, but in just about any career is you got to be able to be able to life, figure out how to break down. Life, yeah. What's that, Ken? Or life in general, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Not just, not just in work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always find it fascinating and maybe it's just the, the way that the three of us are wired that, you know, we want to take advantage of every learning opportunity we can. I just don't understand how people just, you know, oh, just just tell me the answer. I don't really care to learn how, how you got from A to B. I, I don't I just don't get that mindset um, when I interview people. That's one of the things I look for. Do they have this this curiosity that they want to learn things, or are they just going to copy and paste something and not really care? They just it works yeah. and that's it. You know, I don't care. I just don't. I don't quite get that. But um, so, Kevin, uh, maybe maybe at work, maybe at home, probably more at work. Do you have a personal development plan? Do you do PDPs? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I have I have sort of maybe an unwritten goals, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Personal development plan. This is, this is such a weird question. I was talking to Danushki at work about this, you know, um, you know, the, the, the question of what's your, your, what's your five year plan, yeah. you know, for work. Nobody and, knows and it's going to be wrong. Yeah. And, and, and I have, and I literally just go, I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't yeah. know what it looks like. I don't know if, um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to want to do what I'm doing right now in five years. Do I want to be, you know, CEO of a company? Absolutely not. That, that, I, have, I can tell you that something. Not, you know, you not don't want to do. Yeah. I don't. Yes. Um, but I don't know what, what things look like. And so do I have a personal development plan? No, not really. I mean, I know that I want to continue. But you've got learn. goals for know, maybe the next six to six to nine to 12 months, probably. Right. Things you, you know. I've never actually written them down. I mean, I know I want to continue to get better at, you know, at using this tool, you know, Tableau. I, I do want to start learning some other tools. You know, Ken is, Ken has this background in computer science where I have a background in, in mathematics. Um, so Ken, Ken has more experience in, in databases and more experience in writing code. You know, one of the things I want to start learning is how to write, you know, use Python. I'm considering looking at R, you know what I mean? These are the kind of things that I want to, to grow, um, grow those kinds of skill sets that are, are, are data related. Right. Um, but do I have this list of things and how I'm going to get there or these lists of specific things I want to do? Not really. There are just some, a few things like I really want to learn Python, but I downloaded it three weeks ago and haven't done anything about <laughs> it. Right. You know, cause I find myself in my personal time wanting to play in Tableau or this, you know, this, 
thing I'm I'm passionate for. So do I have a, a maybe a, if you a maybe if you wrote your goals if you wrote your goals down, would you hold yourself more accountable? Maybe, probably. Probably maybe right. you find yourself I, an Andy's, accountability buddy. A- Andy, can you can I hire you as a life coach? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's like, yeah, maybe that's a really good idea. Maybe I should write down well, that goal. You know, or, let's put it this yeah. way: you, when you write blog posts, you do it to learn, right? right. And and when you cement your knowledge, if you write it down, you're much more likely to do it because you've written it down and you've committed to yourself in writing. Write it you in are. pen. Don't write it in pencil. Uh, <laughs> you find yourself an account. Correct. You know, it's it's important to have somebody that you're accountable to as well. You know, maybe right. it's your wife. Maybe it's Ken. You know, maybe it's me, whoever, you know, just, um, you know, find somebody that's going to check up on you every month. Say, hey, how are you coming along with these goals? How can I help you? Right. Almost like almost like a mentor. But I would encourage everybody to do that. You know, write a personal development plan. Don't and don't do the stupid five years out thing. You know, do like the next six to nine months or six Mm -hmm. to 12 months because things are going to change too quickly to know. um, You know, so if you want to learn Python, you say, but learning Python is too big of a goal. Right. You need to break it down into individual pieces, you know, um, to say, okay, well, I I know I need to learn how to install it. I know I need to (laughs) learn some of the basics. Okay, well, what are those basics that I need to learn? You make yourself a checklist. Right. And you can sort of snowball things, um, snowball things from there. And then you see yourself checking tasks off and you're going to do more and more because you see that progression in your skills. So same exact way we've learned Tableau. Right. I 100 percent agree with you. And and there's something so powerful about checking a box that, Hey, I just, I, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Like yeah. the feeling of, of, of accomplishment, but hundred percent agree. And I, and, and you're absolutely right. I should, I should have those, those goals written down and, and maybe, a, and, and an accountability partner and, and, and be probably honest from the Python perspective. I have, have none of that. The only, <laughs> the only, the only level of that I have is I told Jeff, Schaefer, if people don't know, I work for Jeff Schaefer. Um, I told him that I was going to download and, and learn Python. So eventually he's going to ask me. <laughs> I'm going to say, no, yeah. I've not done a darn thing. <laughs> so maybe but, the, but you, the shame yourself, will help me, motivate me. You've given yourself too big of a goal. Agreed. You know, You're right. Downloading and learning Python is way too huge. You, know, um, you need to sell yourself smaller, measurable goals, right? You can't measure learn Python. You can measure, I know how to transform this, you know, I know how to transpose this data. I know how to Mm -hmm. aggregate this data, right? Those are very measurable types of things. So when people are creating goals, a goal doesn't do you any good if you can't measure it. Right. Agreed. So, um, Agreed. so it sounds like Kevin's going to create that plan then, right, Ken? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. See you guys by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Um, so why don't, why don't we do some, some fun questions here? We've got about, about 10 minutes to go. We didn't get anywhere near through. Oh, this is a good <laughs> question. And I'll give this one to Ken so that Kevin doesn't get grilled again. Um, Ken, have you reached your full potential? <laughs> yeah. Is anyone? Is anyone possible? <laughs> No, 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 certainly not. Um, what what is your full potential? What do you th- what do you think your full potential is? Man, he has tough it's questions, a, doesn't it's he? It's an impossible <laughs> question, by the way. But, yeah. Um, but you know, you think about yourself. You know, like I think that I can do this. You know, and I can get to this spot one day. Yeah, I mean, I think there there are things that we all have the potential to do or to be, and sometimes we specifically choose not to do that, right? You know, early on in my career, I mean, I think there were people, you know, when I was more of a programmer, you know, doing more sort of IT-ish kind of work, I think there were people who recognized a talent in me and wanted to sort of develop me to become a, you know, a leader, right? Mm-hmm. And I look back and and... And I know that if I wanted to, I could have started myself on a path to becoming like a CIO or a VP or, you know, some high level of executive and, and some organization. Um, and I think I have the potential to do that, right? But I explicit, I specifically, you know, I knowing myself and knowing what, what my passions are and what my values are, those are not things that I was interested in doing, right? So. Potential is an in, in, you know, interesting concept from that standpoint, because I think we all have lots of potentials to become or be things that may not necessarily 
make us happy or be right for us, right? So, um, you know, and I think I a long time ago made a decision that I want to be, you know, I I don't want I don't want that level of role. I like leading a small team and being still being hands on and being a technical expert, right? And and um, and and leveraging those skills to to sort of help my organization. And that's where I've sort of focused my energy. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there are so many things that I you know I I can really improve on, right? Um, you know, I. I manage people, but it's probably not my biggest strength, right? So it's something that I'm constantly, you know, that's part of my professional development plan, right? Is to constantly sort of build those skills and become better at a, a better manager and a better mentor and, and all those kinds of things. And um, I, that's work that's never done, right? You know, I think that mm -hmm. meeting our potential is never done. We're constantly, constantly learning. You know, we, we're talking about, you know, Tableau and technology and things like that. In 15 years, are these things even going to be around anymore? Or are they going to be so different than than what they are? So, I, I mean, I think we have to just be constantly, especially in technology and data, we have to constantly be learning and, and expanding and, and, and growing. Um, and if we don't, we're going to stagnate, right? So, um, yeah, I think it's just an, an ongoing process for all of us. Yeah. So we kind of held Kevin accountable a few minutes ago saying that his goal for learning Python was too big. You just told us that your goal is to become a better manager. Uh, uh, yeah. How do you know, how do you know you've been a better manager if you don't, how are you going to measure that? Good question. <laughs> so you don't know yet, right? <laughs> but I'm challenging you because I think you're never going to know that answer unless you have something you're measuring against. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, and, and part of it for me is, is you know, um, it's obviously just the feedback from my my team, right? You know, I, I have very open, honest conversations with them and I want them to tell me, right? And um, and I've been lucky that they that they told me, yeah, I mean, this is something I think you could work on. You know, so those are sort of specific skills that I sort of work yeah. on and try to build that so that the next time we have that conversation, hopefully we've kind of overcome that one thing and then we can focus on the next thing. And, you know, of course that's something I do with them as well. Right. You know, so I think, you know, that's the give and take of that relationship between superior and, and, uh, yeah. and, and, you know, employee to, to, to kind of make each other better. Right? Yeah. Well, that's the feedback loop that we talked about earlier. Right. Right? You have to be willing to accept that feedback. They're not doing it as a personal attack on you. They're doing it to help you develop, right? Um, thinking about, you know, we hear a lot of people sometimes say, well, I want to be a good manager. That That is completely meaningless. Like, what does good mean? You have to define right. good so that you yeah. can then measure it, right? Because um, a good manager might be somebody who's, whose people turn up every day. And maybe that makes them a good manager. Another manager is maybe somebody that gets all other people promoted. Maybe mm -hmm. they see that as one mm -hmm. of the good managers. You know, there's so many different ways to, to measure that. Okay, Kevin, one attribute of Ken that you wish you had. Ah. And not attribute with the star. <laughs> um, all those muscles, maybe. That'd be that'd be pretty sweet. I'm just joking. Okay. I don't really want that. I, he, he thinks he's bigger and buffer than he really is. So. <laughs> <laughs> So you'd like his ego? <laughs> Just joking. He, he, he is pretty. He's pretty muscular. That's fine. Um, Ken has a lot of technical skills that I don't possess, and, and probably because you know, like I said, he he worked as a DBA for a period of time. He was a programmer. You know, right. he he's been in, in more IT than I have. Um, for you know, I, I've done analytics for a long time, but it was that, like I said, the the grinded out Excel type of analytics. So he's a lot of those skills right. that I'm that I'm at times jealous of. Um, and yeah. you know, um, you know, you can write the structured code. problem solving. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 more like the tools. You know, he he knows how to okay. write code in Python. He you know he put wrote, put okay. together the. The, the the tableau stats thing you write by writing python code it's those types of things that i wish i had okay. more experience he's a he's a whiz at, at sql i mean i've been i have five years experience with sql but i still am probably 
slightly above average or Ken is probably, you know, in the 90th percentile. So uh, right. it's those types of things that I wish I okay. had a little more experience with. And um, so, yeah, I'm a little jealous of him on, on that front and the muscles. How about, Ken, how about you? What's, what's one attribute of Kevin? Kevin's way funnier than I am. I just, <laughs> yeah, this kind of humor is, um, I've always been a little jealous. Okay, great. That's that's a good answer. <laughs> Ken, what's your biggest? Uh, what's the biggest regret of your career? And if you could go back and change it, what would you do? Yeah, I've thought about this, and you know, I think there are all kinds of these little things that happen in your life that you that you look back and you wish you could have changed, right? But would any of us be where we are right now if we did go back you're being too philosophical about it you know just <laughs> <laughs> maybe one career one decision you made in your career that you think maybe set you back um i would say that you know okay to get to not be philosophical about it um i spent the first my first not first my second real job i spent 16 years there um and i think there was a point where i started to sort of stagnate um it was a very sort of private organization to where it wasn't there, you know, we didn't go out and do presentations on things that cool that we had done there, right? We weren't collaborating with, with others in the space. And I think, you know, I would have, going back, I think I would have, it would have been better for me if I had moved on. I learned so much, right? And I gained so many skills and, and things like that, but it would have been better for me if I had a, you know, if I'd have made that jump earlier on, um, you know, and, and once I kind of got out of that, and higher ed is a great place because it is very collaborative. We talk to our competitors all the time and share ideas. And, um, and, and then it's also opened up, you know, me sharing stuff on our blog and doing all this public work and presentations. And I just wish I would have done that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think I've grown so much more in that period of time than I did. In that previous period. how do you avoid that how do you avoid that complacency now um you know i think i think you know when i left that job it, it, i left that for the reasons i just shared but i also left it because i of of things that were going on there that made me unhappy right and i felt okay. so broken about it right because it was a place that that i just poured so much uh, of my energy into, right? And, I, and, it, and it was heartbreaking to leave that. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things, you know, maybe it's me just being guarded, but I think one of the things I've done in this, you know, in my new, my new place of work is, you know, try to keep some of it for myself, right? You know, so some of my own personal and professional development is stuff I do completely outside of work. It's this mm -hmm. community work, it's writing, it's, it's yeah. helping people and learning through that process. Um, and so I think to some degree sort of separating, having some part of my professional being that is not all tied into my work has been part of that, right? Because I can take that wherever, whatever direction I want, um, even if, you know, even if things aren't, um, you know, going exactly the way I might like in, in my role, right? So I think that's been part of it for me and and just part of the learning experience of having gone through that that process with the last job. Okay. Kevin, what's the last thing that made you cry? <laughs> uh, he wants me to answer. sad. Yeah. It, it, can you answer that question first and then I'll and then I'll try to answer it. So I just dropped my kid off at college in August for his first semester. So um it's horrible. It's it? really hard not to not to cry as we were saying goodbye. It's five hours away, which is a pretty decent distance. Um, we tried really hard not to cry, but we couldn't help it after we left. So yeah, that was the last thing that made me cry. Yeah, now I'll answer. Brutal. I have absolutely no idea the last time I cried. It's probably been at least it's been multiple years. Really? It's, just, it's not in me. Um, it's, I'm kind of like dad, my, my dad, I've never seen cry in my entire life. Vietnam vet, like he just, he didn't mm -hmm. cry at his own mo mother's funeral, which seems weird. I remember bawling my eyes out at that. Um, so I, I have no idea. My, my I family all super like, 
my family will watch movies and my son's over there. You know, he says his eyes are leaking, you know, he's just crying because of something sad in the movie. I just probably when, when Graham died, I'm guessing that, and that's been what, wow. five years. That's probably the last time. That, that I am the complete opposite. I, I watched an Instagram video the other day. It was about this um, little kid who was, who was, he was dying from cancer and he was this huge wrestling fan. I forget who it was. I think it was Triple H or something, you know, and, he, <laughs> and they invited him to like wrestle him. And it was just so like, I just was bawling watching this. I'm the complete opposite of you in that case. I, <laughs> I cry all the time. I can't <laughs> see me cry more than, more than. Yeah. Me. Well, one of my, one of my favorite songs is Adele singing, um, uh, make you feel my love. Do you know that song? You've, I'm sure you've heard it. But every time it plays, I cry. And Eva is always like, why do you keep playing that song? <laughs> <laughs> like, because I like it. I mean, it's like, it's like a, it's not a sad cry. It's a, like, you know, make you feel good. Like you're dropping your head <laughs> off the floor. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a make you feel good kind of cry. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So at the end of the last podcast, um, one of the ways that I'm wrapping this up, and I got this from the podcast, The Diary of the CEO. If you uh, if you don't listen to that, it's great. And uh, this is where the idea came from to ask the previous guest for a question to ask the next guest, and they don't know mm. who the next guest is. Mm, nice. So, uh, so the, the Francois was my last guest. So Kevin, I'll let you go first with his question. Hopefully, you haven't cheated and looked at the question already. No, let's hear okay. it. Let's hear the question. Okay. So <laughs> you have the chance to meet an important historical figure, influential historical figure. Who is it and what would you ask them? Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe Andy Creeble. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Francois. Francois. Are you gonna, um, I met both of you, so I can't say that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think like what person has influenced life as we know it more than any other human in history is probably Jesus. I sure love to, uh, to, to talk with him. If we want to keep it in the vein of data, I would have loved to meet Hans Rosling, not because of his strength in, in, in analysis. It's, it's, it's more of his presentation and his, it's the passion that comes through when he's talking. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody like that in my life. I mean, I think, I think Jeff Schaefer is potentially one of the best presenters I've ever seen. And Hans Rosling is just like, sorry, Jeff, blows him out of the water. You know what I mean? He, he's he, just uh, so he the much. Yeah. Yeah, he I, presented right, the yeah. Conference, so, yeah. Yeah. Was that right? Was how, many, that, how long ago was that? Probably 2014, something like okay, that. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was great. Ken, how about you? What's an important, an influential historical figure? Outside yeah, of Dan, um, it was a cheating answer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, going with the religious part of it, I mean, I, I've always, so, I mean, growing up in the West, right, I feel like their Eastern religions have always been fascinating to me. I've spent so a lot. If, if I wasn't doing data as a career, I think I would have ended up going back and studying, you know, comparative religion and teaching it or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so Eastern religion has always been somewhat foreign and yet incredibly fascinating to me. So I could, I would really love to sit down with the Buddha at some point and just, you know, um, understand his, his point of view, right. And, and, you know, how, how he sees the world and how to sort of, you know, grow as a human being right and just get that get that perspective i think um yeah that, i think that's really great. yeah so now it's your chance to leave a question for the next guest who wants to leave the question only one you know, I, I love the uh what is the uh the desert island discs what is that, that, that so that, that like from the office, office? <laughs> uh, I, thought it was like a, I thought it was like a television show in the UK or something where they, they Gilligan's say, Island? With that, <laughs> where if you had if you were stuck on a desert island, what are the five um, uh, I think they usually ask books, uh, or maybe it's albums, but I would phrase it, what are the five what are the two, let's say two what are the two music albums you would bring with you? 
What are the things you would have to have if you were stuck on a desert island and you had the capability? Okay, so five, two music albums if you're stuck on a deserted island. Love it. Excellent. <laughs> Who's the next Great. guest? Are you allowed to say? Uh, so the next guest is Kirill Aramenko. I don't know if you guys know Kirill. So um, he runs a company called Super Data Science. Yep. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. really fantastic courses. Uh, I've known him for for several years now, um, and he's actually into something new that now that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about. Yeah, so guys, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate all you do for the community. I know I learn a ton from you every week. Um, keep it up. Uh, you're helping a lot of people and. Uh, Hopefully, you know your influence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Right. Appreciate it. We feel the same way about you. For the yeah, great. Thank yeah. you. All right. Bye.